Hello fellow Ozians, I'm the Louisiana Quadling, a Wizard of Oz collector and enthusiast, sharing with you my thoughts, my collection, and a little bit of my musical talent with all of you, and welcome to my channel. Today, we'll be looking at one of my favorite ball-jointed dolls from my collection. Ozma was released by Amirai in 2014. The full set was a limited edition of 50 worldwide, and she originally retailed for 540 US dollars. This is the only doll that I know of that is based off of the character of Princess Ozma from the Oz books. For those of you that are maybe not familiar with the later Oz books, at the end of the second Oz book, The Marvelous Land of Oz, Ozma is restored to her rightful place on the throne of Oz. Ozma comes in a large black shoebox style box with gold embossing on the top and a sticker on the bottom indicating the name of the doll, the resin color of the doll, and the addition. This is the full set version. This particular doll's outfit did not fit inside the box and came separately. And opening the box reveals the doll inside the carrying case and her paperwork. Ozma is a BJD, or ball-jointed doll, stands about 17 inches tall, and utilizes Amirai's original fourth-scale female body. Her resin is the white version. She was available in two other skin tones. Ozma is a highly articulated doll. She has 14 points of articulation, and when compared with other ball-jointed dolls that are around her size, she definitely holds her poses really well. This doll is also weighted. She can stand by herself without a stand. Obviously, I don't display this doll without a stand. The stand that I use is from Fantasy Doll. Uh, they did not come originally with stands. Ozma's head sculpt was not exclusive to this doll. It was used on one other doll from the Oz line. And this doll comes with a really nice wheat blonde wig with a braid that kind of crowns her head, as well as also having this lovely Oz crown with these nice silk poppies. She also has these nice deep emerald green eyes. They're probably coming up black on the camera, but they are green. Um, when I received this doll, I had to actually insert those eyes into her head. And for those of you who don't typically collect ball-jointed dolls, they're highly customizable. You can change the eyes, you can change the wig. A lot of people like to repaint these dolls and create different characters with them, so they're very customizable. Ozma's outfit includes her emerald green satin dress with white tulle, removable cape, panties, and lastly, her shoes. Ozma's accessories include her crown that I mentioned before, and also her staff. And isn't this thing stinking cool? The staff is actually also changeable. You can change the size of the staff so that you can either have it be a longer one or a shorter one. Amirai made it so that it was changeable. So if you wanted to display the doll in different poses, maybe you have the doll sitting down so you have the smaller versions that it's easier for the doll to hold versus the staff that can simply rest on the doll's hand. Now, I know I've got to talk about the big green elephant in the room. Doesn't she look a lot like a certain depiction of Ozma? Like, a lot. It's pretty obvious the designer of this doll really liked a certain Disney film called Return to Oz, since this Ozma really doesn't look anything like John R. Neal's original illustrations and looks way more like Emma Ridley's Princess Ozma. 
There's also a picture of the prototype of this doll, which came with orange poppies on her crown instead of the green ones that this one came with, which resembles even more the Disney design. I get why they changed them to the green because overall it matches the outfit much better than having the orange poppies, but obviously it'd be nice to have it look a little bit more like Return to Oz, but I like the green. I think it works. Back in 2017, I attended the International Wizard of Oz Club's National Convention and got this doll signed by Ozma herself, Emma Ridley. Emma was over the moon with seeing herself in doll form. I acquired Ozma along with all of the other Oz dolls from Amorai back in 2015 after Amorai announced that they would be discontinuing all of their Oz dolls and gave a special discount on all of their dolls. Now, if you are interested in getting this particular doll, mm. good luck. And I really mean that good luck. I have only seen one, one of this doll sell on the secondary market since 2015. So I really have no idea what you'd have to pay to get this doll. While this doll is not an official Return to Oz doll, I still consider her to be a Return to Oz doll. And since I do, she's only the second doll to ever be produced by a company that's based off of any of the characters from the Disney movie. Do you think that she is a Return to Oz doll, or do you just consider her an Ozma doll, since Ozma was originally a blonde at the end of The Land of Oz, before John O'Neill and L. Frank Baum decided to change her hair to be a little bit darker? What do you think? Let's have a little discussion down in the comments section. And if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. New videos are posted every two weeks on the 15th and the last day of each month. And if that doesn't satisfy your appetite for Oz, follow the link in the description to ozclub.org and join the International Wizard of Oz Club. Until next time, bye y'all.